when he's hot, there's nobody hotter. You saw it in the playoffs. There's nobody hotter. He can hit lefties, righties. There is big league production in this bat and, and the glove. Let's charge the damn mound. <laughs> Eddie Rosario is a Washington national. It is a deal that can get up to $4 million with incentives. This is called a split contract. I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain it that well. So for our major minor league expert, let's go to three inches to my left. <laughs> Eric Kratz. Four and a half inches. That's how close. True. Although our, our arms touch sometimes. Yep, they do. It happens. It is a quarters here. It is split contract. Just means he got a minor league deal. Really? It just means, and he negotiated because of how much service he has. He negotiated his big league salary. Like to me, this is what this is what veterans, especially a guy who had a to me above average season last year on a the best the, the best team in the National League last year, if not the best team in all of baseball last year. He was a fixture in left field for him. Yeah, I get it. You know, he might be a platoon advantage guy, but he put up above average numbers and he gets a minor league deal. This is a minor league deal. Don't get it twisted. It's not split. He gets nothing unless he makes the team. And most teams, especially like a nationals team, is not going to contend. They're going to tell him, hey, you made the team out of camp. Sign this 45-day clause. So all 40, 4 million of that contract is not guaranteed just because he makes the team. He can, it's kind of what uh, Todd was talking about the other day. You sign it, and before 45 days, team goes in the tank. He doesn't do well. See ya. And all they owe is 45 days. I'll, I'll give you the definition too, AJ. So it says a split contract calls for a player to earn different salaries in the majors and minors. On uh, a split contract, you would get the prorated version of your major league salary for any time spent on the major league roster. So. To me, that's like a minor league deal, like you said. It's a minor league it's a, deal. It's a fancy schmancy. Although, although I will league. say this, the only thing different is he can go to the minor leagues because if he gets to camp late, they might say to him, "Hey," because he's probably out of options. He's got too much service time. Yeah. So he probably did this, like, "Hey, we need you to go to AAA for two weeks. Are you okay?" Instead of having to go to him, he's probably already agreed to that if if he does if he's not ready. As, as opposed to what, though, AJ? What do you mean? As opposed as to opposed like, as opposed to going because if you're if you're a non-roster guy and he has enough time, like most of the time the team will come to you and say, "Hey, we, you know, we, we you're not going to make the team." And most guys will say, "Release me." But the right. way this, I mean, the way I read this, it's like he's already agreed. Kind of, if they say, "Hey, you're not going to make the team," will you go to AAA for a week or something? He, it seems like he's already said okay. yes to that. Yeah, no, I, I I hear that, and that's trash for a guy that. Not, not for Eddie. It, it's trash that a guy that had a 1.1 war, and I'm just going to go to war just to give it an easy, that he was an above average player. His OPS plus in the big leagues was completely average for a big leaguer. Not completely average for minor leaguers that need to get called up. This is MVP. Well, I guess he wasn't NLCS MVP. He was NLDS. They don't have an NLDS MVP. He carried the Braves the first two rounds of the playoffs when they won the World Series. This is a solid big league contributor getting a minor league deal. It's, oh, it's exactly what TK was talking he about. He was NLCS MVP, by the way. He did win NLCS? Okay. Yeah, because Ed Solaire won the World Series MVP, but he won NLCS okay. MVP. He was insane. They don't get there without. They don't get there without him. No, like, I know, but that was in the past. But, but let's push it forward, But okay? he still produced last That's year. That's what I'm saying. I mean, 21 <laughs> homers. AJ, the on-base percentage is low, but like Kratz mentioned, this is league average offense. Defense sometimes in question. He actually had was 80th percentile outs above average range last year. So the, the arm value was low. The arm strength was about average, but it's not like he's a total <laughs> mess out there. He's still an above average runner. So he's made plenty of clutch deliveries in those kind of situations at the plate. Is this a minor league contract level player? I mean, nobody wanted him. That The Nationals, I think, are going to have a nice little get here to help them while they bridge the gap between James Wood and Dylan Cruz being major leaguers. Uh, it's kind of what we already mentioned. Kike Hernandez was kind of mentioning this there. And this is a guy that should be on a big league roster. He should be on a competitive team because he can help you, especially on a platooning team. He definitely can help you against right-handed pitchers. So 
I don't know. I don't know why he hasn't signed. Was he asking for too much money? I don't know. I wasn't in the negotiations. But I find it hard to believe that a guy like this has to wait until March 6th to find a big league slash minor league job. Are you kidding me? But again, I don't know all the details, but it just seems crazy that there's a lot of big league above average players that are just sitting out there waiting and waiting and waiting. And guess what? They're running out of time. Where's Michael Lorenzen? What's wrong with Michael Lorenzen? What am I, I missing? Ken, maybe we can ask Ken too. He's he's looking for a two year deal. Oh, okay. So he's getting the fight from teams saying we're giving you one, and he wants two. And I think he got eight point five or nine point five last year, and he would like the same in a two year deal. So he's looking at like an eighteen to twenty range. <laughs> yeah, sorry about your no hitter in a show last year, and and a great year up until the end of the season when and he's versatile. He ran out of gas. Yeah. So, so maybe his ask is too high, but I want to ask Ken about it. But again, it goes back to what we talk about. We've talked about this. If you think you're worth $10 million and every team is saying you're worth $5 million, guess how much you're worth? You're worth $5 million, even though you think you're worth ten. It doesn't matter. At some point, and that's what we keep talking about with the, the Snell and the Montgomery and J.D. Martinez, the guys that are still left out there, That this is how teams can also hold down salaries by saying, hey, we're just going to wait it out. And, I mean, the players have no recourse, really. I mean, we can use the collusion word. But they have to prove it, and that's a long, big old court fight. So, I mean, it, it, it's tough to prove, but this is a way for teams, even though they say they aren't doing it, if, you know, like T.K. Hernandez said, he got offers the same <laughs> amount around the same time from different teams. I mean, that that spells it out for you. And here's, here's, here's a good example. A.J. is obviously a different position, different career. Only – Five times in AJ's career would he have had an OPS plus higher than Eddie Rosario had. And how many one-year minor league contracts did you have to sign? Again, you're a catcher. I get it. I've never signed one. Never. And that's – and that's – you shouldn't have. You're a fringe Hall of Fame player at a premium position. I get it. Eddie's not a premium position. There's got to be – it, it's got to be – to me, it, it should be a $4 million deal. That's it. KK got four million. Maybe he should get three and a half. What, whatever you want to do, it's in that. I think Kike's underpaid. We can argue semantics there. It should be a big league deal. And also, Kike had the injury, but he was coming off some down numbers. Eddie Rosario's numbers are not bad. He's still an above average player if you're looking at offense and defense. And a win is supposed to be worth what eight to twelve million dollars. So he's on a. It went away from that. Teams went away from that though because huh. then they were they were the people were like oh we'll just use wins and get more money on the free agent market so then teams were like oh we're not going to use that anymore even though we came up with that that stat that we we all high and mighty on that's the stat we're going to use oh wait it makes players get paid more guess what well we're not going to use that stat anymore we're going to have our own we're going to have our own stats we use that we won't tell you about <laughs> they don't all they don't all use the same stats and have like a database where like it would put like a value to a player do they. Hmm. Computers can't do that yet. Preview computers can't do that. Hmm. <laughs> the best, the best is is when you when you would be a free agent, you call a team and you'd be like, okay, coming off a good year, I you know whatever you, two four right, which back then was like, okay, that's five million a a win, so I should be getting ten million. You call a team, they're like, oh, well, we respect war, but we have our own our own numbers we use, but we're not going to tell you what those numbers are. So here's two million. You're like, wait a minute, how do I go from ten to two? That that's when it gets crazy for players because nobody exactly knows what they really use because nobody has to say it. This guy's a winner, and a winner should have him on the team. Agreed. Yeah, we're going to watch the first few weeks of the season, and now this is a perfect example of a player that I'm going to go. Is that a Rosario better than this dude? Is that a Rosario better than this dude? On contending teams, right? You're going to watch, you know, a uh, – a Sunday game where a fourth outfielder's in, right? And it's early in the season. Maybe there aren't as many injuries. And I'm going to be like, is that guy better than Eddie Rosario? What am I missing? Heavy platoon guy. Heavy platoon. Like, you're, you're going to give him all the right-handed starters. Mm -hmm. And a, when he's hot, there's nobody hotter. You saw it in the playoffs. There's nobody hotter. He can hit lefties, righties, and he can go cold. I get it. I get that, you know, low, low on base percentage. Hurts, but there is big league production in this bat and and the glove. Bad ball hitter too, so that can sometimes get Tough you in to trouble. Pitch too. <laughs> but in the playoffs, sometimes that can be everything, right? I just need a knock, dude. Even if it's a little bit outside the zone, can you go the other way with this pitch? And 
Yeah, that one was confusing to me. That's all. I mean, he does it with damage too. He does bad ball damage. Like Twenty plus homers and not a full season of abs. It might sound like, oh, we're going too hard with with Eddie Rosario here. He made nine million dollars last year. They turned down his option for this season, and I get it. He can make up to four, but he doesn't get a major league contract. That's that's my biggest gripe here. The major league contract. The major part. league contract part. He's thirty two years old. He's not forty nine. <laughs> I'm just utterly confused. You know, I'm I'm not like, oh my gosh, Eddie Rosario needs a five year, a hundred million dollar deal. I get it. I get it. One year contract, but like you said, major league deal. So something to think about. I'm confused. Brace fans know what I'm talking about. Like you said, Brace fans love Eddie Rosario. He had his ups and downs. He also had the eye issue, remember? So in mm-hmm. 2022, slow start, swelling in his right eye, had a procedure, was out for a while, messed him up a little bit. Better last I, year. I didn't remember that. Yep. So he's a hell of a player, though. Remember. He's a good player. Yeah, that's a winning player. So hopefully he does well with the Nats. I, I think the last layer of this is the Nats are likely going to have James Wood and Dylan Cruz still in the minor leagues to start the season, and they'll call them. Dude, up the Nats are loaded in the outfield. Nats are loaded in the outfield. Oh, really? Go on. <laughs> I mean, they have they have Lane Thomas, they have Robles, who they brought back. Yeah. Right. And what's his name? Stone Garrett. That dude's a monster. I mean, yep. I don't know if he's a good, he's a great player, but he's a big dude. He's a guy one coming off the bus first. Right. There's three right there. <laughs> and we haven't even hit on Cruz or Wood, and then you throw in Eddie Rosario. There's four outfielders at least on their nat. So the Nats are loaded in the outfield. Yeah, and and. Don't sleep on the season that Stone Garrett had. He he started – he kind of – it was all that second half, too, where the Nats were almost at 500. Maybe we're, you know, complimenting something that shouldn't be complimented. But to me, he was he was one of the guys. That outfield is, is tradable, especially if C.J. Abrams becomes something. Now you're solid in all three outfield positions because if James Wood doesn't become something, man, did I miss. I My, my eyes are – Going cross-eyed if I miss that one. He's destroying oh. pitching in spring training right now. I get it. I know. Yeah, but it's spring different. Training, but it's different. It's different spring training homers. He's going. He's going inside pitches. He's taking the left center. He's going. He's going pitches away. He's going to right center with him. He's going to big parts of the ballpark and watching all his home runs from last year. He's taking balls center field to oppo all the time for his dingers it's versus lefties and righties Mm -hmm. so yeah the major league roster now can have gallo if he's right eddie rosario lane thomas yeah robles garrett and then two potential all-stars waiting in the wings maybe the nets mess around a little and are much more of a pain in the ass they, they were, were paying the ass year. for teams last year, the second half. The second half, they were about 500. They were, I think, 35 yeah. and 37 in the second half. Money. Yeah, they were paying the ass last year. Money. We're, Money. we're getting to a point Money. where I like to play this game. Which lineup do you like better? I know I, I made it too easy yesterday. I said Mets or, Na- or Marlins. How about Nationals or Marlins? Which lineup do you like better? It's pretty close, right? Depends on what Tim Anderson comes out mm-hmm. sure depends if Jake Berger can grow from where he was because that's a pretty if he's only going to produce what he did last year that's still pretty solid yes I don't need the Nats have anybody in the infield that can do what he does from a Joe power Gallo game Joe Gallo yeah Gallo can he Gallo could be, can he could be I guess kind of who do you a, take poor who, man's Jake Berger who do you take <laughs> Berger or Gallo Berger I mean, Gallo gives you defense, and you love defense. I do. I do love defense, but <laughs> I still true. take Berger. He had a 120 OPS plus last year. Berger was 250, 34 homers, 309 on base, 518 slugging. Yeah, had a great year. A guy that had been injured most of his career, you know, and finally had his breakout season at, what was he, 27 years old yep. for most of last season. Jazz yeah. can't be mid if the Marlins are going to yeah. compete. They do. They do a lot of good things. AJ will always tell you they want to won a lot of one run games. Mm-hmm. It's just an interesting debate that the Nationals are starting mm-hmm. to build. I mean, Ruby should be a little better with, with the bat, and on and on like the 
players. That's why I said it it wouldn't surprise me if they went out and signed a big free agent because they're, they're kind of building towards that spot, right? We talked to Davey Martinez. It was build, 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 build. Well, then if you can get a Snell for a five-year deal, then you look three years from now, you're like, all right, we still have Blake Snell. or That's kind of, you know, the way they've done it. I agree. I think start now. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball, the way it should be covered.